Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Now, uh, we are now at chapter number 5 and we are going to talk about the flavor of service and humility. Now, Acts chapter number 13 verses 36. Now here, for David, after he had served his own generations by the will of God, fell asleep and he was laid unto his fathers. That's good. Now we are going to talk about the flavor now. But here we are talking about the flavors that make life significant. Now, here we are going to talk about the flavor of service and humility. Yeah. Now, I don't want to hurt or subtract to lose the flavor of the, the book too. No. First of all, uh, service and humility. God expects you to be significant wherever you go. He wants you to be substantial. To be significant is to be momentous and influential. Is to have a major impact or important life. Now, what is serving, first of all? We can define here with uh, our main definitions. To work for somebody, to attend to customers, be a member of armed forces, be used for something, work as a servant, assist somebody in particular way. Now, Okay. What is humility? Um, humility is humility is becoming a servant to others. It is obedience to God. Now, humility is where the spirit of obedience much consists. A spirit, a proud spirit is a rebellious spirit, but a humble spirit sir, is yieldable. Humility. Now, um, humility depicts character of Christ and is true followers. Humility. Always a winner. Now, humility speaks for submission to authority. First Peter, chapter five, verses five. Young men, the same way, um, to be submissive to where who are holder. Then you can also check uh, Matthew eighteen four. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. Now, humility is esteeming. Uh, but to not be humility is esteeming others. More important than yourself, for oh, that's humility. You can check uh, Philippians 2 3 and also Romans 12 3. And also, humility is lack of pride in oneself. Oh, that's now where uh, pride, pride, I think, is one of the things that most people we struggle with. I'm pride, you are pride. Now, um, humility, uh, okay, now, look at. Um, uh, I've listened to this, the author of this book, Pastor Jim Marshall, and said, he has said that pride is the sin of all sins. It's the mother of all sins. Now, look at what the Bible talks about uh, pride in uh, Proverbs 18 12. It says, Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Now, Proverbs 11 12. Now, this one will. Uh, Will make you hate pride. It says when pride comes, then comes shame. Be humble, but with the humble is wisdom. Wow. That's that's so that's so no um that's no very 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 mind blowing. Now let's talk about um something here also. Pride is a dangerous sin, as I've told you here now. Most of us are kept from significance because of pride. The sin of pride is the sin of all sins. Yeah, that's what I was looking. Now, um, St. Augustine of Hippo wrote, Pride is the commencement of all sins. Now, the sin of pride is preoccupation with self. Now, do you know uh, Satan? was very proud. Now let's look at Isaiah chapter number 14 verses 12 to 15. How? Now uh, look at this. Preoccupation, the, the letter at the middle is high. High, 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 high. I will do this. I will go here. I will, I will, I will. High, high, high. High people. Now look at this. Uh, the Bible says, uh, How are you fallen from heaven, holy Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground. You weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, Hi, I will ascend into heaven. 
I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation of the father's sides. I will ascend above uh, heights of the clouds. I will be like the most I yet. You shall be brought down to Shehol, to the lowest depths of the feet. Now, Satan's enmity against God began with high. And also it is with us. If you are preoccupied with yourself, you are suffering from the sin of pride. Okay? Yeah. Now, the sin of pride, Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> the great Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar suffered the sin of pride too. He lost his kingdom for it. Now look at that. Now let's read the, I think that story is the book of Daniel. Yeah, book of Daniel chapter number 4. 29 to 33 you can go and see and but it says at the end of 12 months he was walking about the royal palace the king spoke saying look at this is this not the babylon the great which i myself built as a royal residence by the mighty of my power for the glory of my majesty well the words were still on his mouth and he spoke uh, sorry, a voice spoke from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling will be with the oxen, will be the beast of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you. Seven years. No, yeah. Until you know that the monster rules the kingdom of men and gives to whomever it chooses. That very hour the word was fulfilled. Was the name Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till the air had grown like eagles' feathers. And his nails like nails like birds, clothes. No, nails were so big. Eh? Those people love uh, love keeping long nails. Well, whenever some people see you, they see Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar was later given an opportunity to repent. Look at uh, um, Daniel 4.34. Now, Nebuchadnezzar learned his lessons uh, and they uh, he got his kingdom back. Now, um, now let's also look at uh, the sin of pride in Belshazzar. Nebuchadnezzar was extended God's grant and he repented. His grandson. Now, this Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, okay? Um, um, ex uh, perhaps it's because uh, Nebuchadnezzar's experience was made uh, to serve a lesson to all. Uh, yeah. Now, go and read, uh, you can go and read uh, which book here, Daniel chapter 4, verse 18, 23 to 30. You will see how also this uh, grandson of Nebuchadnezzar was also proud. All of us are was filled with pride. Now, uh, by looking the lives of uh, these two men, we can learn that the sin of pride might work in our own lives. Nebuchadnezzar, on the other hand, did not acknowledge God for what he had given him. Now, from the two examples, we see how pride can easily skew our options of reality. Pride can blind us to the reality of situation. Now, um, now let's look at the signs that you are proud. They need to be right. That's number one. They need to be right. Galatians 6, 3. For if a man thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Okay. Wow. That's, a, that's, that's so, so powerful. Then, being agitative. These people who argue... Uh, from their point of view, especially those in authority over them, the root of the argument is they believe that they are right. Now that's also argument, like your pride. Then number three, more more invested in being, more interested in being hard. Eh? Sorry, more invested in being hard than hearing. Now look at James one nineteen. What does it say? So then, my brethren, let every Man be swift to hear and slow to speak, and slow to anger. That's 
Now that gives us number four, anger. Anger is self-justifying emotion. Yeah, sign that you are proud. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. Do not, do not extend in your spirit to be hungry, for anger is in the bosom of fools. So if you are you're quick to hunger, you are a fool. Not me, it's the Bible written. And also you can check James 1.20 that says, uh, the last part says, For the wrath of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. Yeah, If you are hungry, hunger, you don't produce the righteousness of God. Uh, Sarah. Then um, number five, irritability and patience. The root, the root of impatience is anger and therefore common sign of pride. The number six, lack of a submissive attitude. Submission is a voluntary placement of oneself under influence or control or authority of another. Then number seven, not easily corrected. Those people, people, no at all mentality. Yes, if you snap, uh, if you snap at corrections and they conclude that they are correcting you, you, those who are correcting you are against you. You could be harboring pride. Then number eight. Receives correction but not changing. These guys who are after giving you correction say thank you for the feedback, but I'll do nothing about it. Look at Second Peter, chapter number twenty-two. But it has happened then. Uh, but it has happened to them according to the true proverb: a dog returns to his own vomit, and also having washed to wallowing in the mire. Wow. Wow, <laughs> that's so powerful. Second Peter chapter 2 verses number 22. That's one of the verses that I don't want ever to forget in my life. That, But it has happened to them according to the true proverb. A, a dog returns to his own vomit and are so having washed at wallowing in the mire. Number nine, needing others to take their advice. These kinds of people go seeking people to advise they will feel annoyed if you don't take the advices yeah then number 10 needing to proclaim your titles or degrees if you don't add, add if not addresses in your titles like you feel offended you want people to know who you are you ask questions like do you know who i am should you know people no famous statement should you know people yeah then number 11 being stubborn Stubborn is a quality and duly determined exact will, not easily persuaded and difficult to handle. This is the I want what I want when I want it. It's an, another name for pride. Then number 12, comparison and competition. Second, first Corinthians 10, 12, for we dare not class or compare ourselves to those who comment themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Well, comparison is also a form of competition, guys, and an attitude of the art and inwardly grieves when other is more uh, successful judges when someone else in hard times. Yeah, this type of people who, who, like, they laugh when another man is down. Now, I had someone in my life who, like, would be very happy when like you he knows you are in a, in a situation and in fact those are the people who sometimes are so close to us by the way yeah that's a sign of pride they are proud then there are five types of proud social proud first corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 for who makes you differ from one another for who makes you differ from one another and what do you have that you did not receive? Wow, that's very powerful. Now, if you indeed uh, receive it, why do you post if you had not received it? Wow, it's very powerful. Okay, the next one is uh, pride of power and authority. Some people just cannot handle power and authority to given to them. Authority and power is given to some individual turns them arrogant and constituted. Yeah, we have seen the people in government today. The people who lead us in uh, churches, in some departments, at our place of work. Yeah. Then also number three. So, so uh, pride of authority and uh, 
power as i told you everything is in the bible this book you can check first Timothy chapter 3 now uh, chapter 3 verse 6 eh? it says uh not a, a novice lest being puffed up with pride he fall into the same condemnation as the devil wow then number three is material pride check luke 12 21 it says and now he said to them take care be on your guard against all kinds of greed for once life does not consist of abundance possession the spirit of excess eh? yeah <laughs> it's material pride yeah they i i, I used to to listen a certain man of god who used to pray against uh, the spirit of excess yeah and also the spirit of premature sex yeah he used to pray a lot against and deliver people against those spirits then number four intellectual proud is a form of any this is a form of pride is the enemy of the cross of jesus christ because it gives a man false confidence wow look at uh, proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 trust in the lord with thine heart and lean not on your own understanding okay Education is good, but it should never come between you and God. Read also Corinthians, First Corinthians eight one to two. Knowledge puffs up, but love and and defies. But if a man thinks he knows everything, he knows nothing, as he ought to know. Wow, that's powerful, powerful. Then also spiritual pride. That's number five. Huh? As a form pride, uh, is a form of self righteousness uh, no look at these people who have been uh, born again for a long time they feel like they have been in church for long and say like i've been saved for the last 20 30 years 40 etc therefore they cannot praise the newcomers okay they 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 newly saved they are now fiery friends spirituality is not measured by the Yes, you have been in salvation, but how oh, intimate you are with God. Okay. Now, um, to check on the spiritual pride, we know the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector. That story is in the Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. They went, two men went up in the temple to pray, and one was a Pharisee and the other one was a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed, thus, oh, God, I thank you. I am not like the other man, extortionist, unjust, and uh, that I possess. Uh, a tax collector standing far for would not uh, so my raises uh, is in heaven, but it is just saying, God, be merciful to me, I am a sinner. God, be merciful to me, I am a sinner. Okay. And then uh, I tell you, this man went down to his house and just rather than the other for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and then who humbles himself should be exalted now what what to do with pride see how do we fight the sin of pride now number one is to recognize that you have the problem now um you can check jeremiah 17 9 to 10 it also psalms 139 verses 23 to 24 Lots of Psalms from um, Psalms one that no. Uh, number two, ask God for mercy. Mercy. Check Psalms 51 1 to 2. The Bible says, uh, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude and your tender mercies. Uh, blot out to the transgression. Wash me thoroughly from the iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Yeah, mercy. Then also, um, can check also uh, by asking for mercy you're humbling yourself because uh, James 4 6 says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble God gives grace to the humble then number three uh, confess to your brothers and sisters in Christ that you are struggling with pride and come ask them to pray for you James 5 16 says confess your trespasses for one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the effective pavement of prayer of, the red, of a righteous man unveils much. Also, so in summary, 
how do we deal with pride you confess pride your pride is sin humble yourself in the sight of the lord and ask him to forgive you ask him to empty you and fill his holy spirit and ask him to use you again now ladies and gentlemen here are a few suggestions on practicing humility there are times number one there are times when swallowing one's pride is particularly difficult in and the, any intentions of humility fly out the window and as we engaged in a contest of perfection each siding to seek look good if we find yours if you you find yourself in such no win situation consider developing some strategy to, to ensure to ensure that uh, that the circumstances don't lead you to lose your trace okay now try this sometimes stop talking and allow other person to be in the limelight there is something very liberating in this strategy number two here are some three magical words that will produce more peace of mind than a week at an expensive retreat you are right someone tells you something wrong then you tell them you are right okay number three catch yourself if you begin to sleep to sleep in into over preaching or coaching without permission is zeal to impose your point of view over discussion of discretion is your is your correction of others now when uh, sometimes uh, i feel like uh, we are arguing with someone you ask them why should we argue and we have google just google and let's see if what does google say okay that's all we have google and google <coughs> should help you now um <coughs> number four seek others input on how you are showing up in leadership path ask how am i doing it takes you to ask such a question and even more you to consider the answer number five encourage the practice of humility in your company through own example every time you share credit for success with others you reinforce the egos of your constraints considering mentoring and coaching emerging leadership now in summary the sin of pride means manifest is self motives and exaggerated ego disallowing opinion of others and the disrespect for god it can lead you to other sins against god robbing god is glory and is due when it does now we fight pride by humbling ourselves for god for prayer asking him to reveal pride hidden the pride hidden in our hearts and acknowledging and repenting of pride when we see it in others in ourselves sorry and also by asking transparent with our christian family for the sake of accountability ladies and gentlemen we are done with chapter five now guys um let's practice to serve with humbleness and humility let's serve with to serve and humility is a very good flavor i already love it now um i noticed in heaven god would won't be needing bankers like me probably god won't need doctors god need won't need um, security men in fact in heaven there will be no no thieves because they are yeah you can check on that in the bible it's written yeah? and also um so ladies and gentlemen brethren my subscribers and loyal people let's look for something to do to god Guys, if you have liked my video, subscribe and see you in the next one.